the Auditor General, as you know, released a bombshell report exposing uh, incompetence and corruption within the CBSA. And I think the most glaring problem with, with this report is how the government, despite its province, try, despite its promise in 2015 to reduce the size of the use of external consultants and rely upon the professional public service, and we know that over the years he's increased the size of the public service by close to 40 percent. How do you feel as union leaders, and how does the membership feel knowing that GC Strategies, a two-person firm working out of their basement with no IT experience, simply connecting government with IT professionals, how does your membership feel about that egregious abuse of the expertise that your membership holds? So I'm gonna take that because I represent the IT workers and I'll say we are livid. Uh, I, I would love are. to come back to this committee. Uh, there's lots that I could talk about with regards to uh, the, this whole contracting out. I had a member come to me yesterday um, or th this week and said, I can't even get a pencil and a notebook without two people you know, signing off on authority. How can something balloon so big? Wow. So I would, I would love the opportunity to come back. I didn't prepare for that testimony today, but I would love to come back and talk to you. You've got three and a half minutes. Can you, can you uh, elaborate so, some more? Okay. okay, so contracting out has been a preoccupation of the Professional Institute of the Public Service of Canada. We represent professionals, engineers, nurses, doctors, all, all regulated professionals um, who uh, take their work very seriously on behalf of Canadians. To uh, watch things be contracted out, it, it leads to uh, higher costs to the government. It was 40% higher in the report, less transparency, less accountability lower quality of service, it, and most importantly for me is the loss of institutional knowledge mm -hmm. because it is done out of house. That means that we have to consistently be interdependent on uh, contractors to uh, even correct mistakes that they have made. So we need to make sure that we invest in the public service so that they can maintain and deliver the, the, the services, reliable services on which Canadians depend and expect. Thank you very much. And uh, given the fu fu sorry, future expansion of um, our work here at, uh, at Ethics, I I'm sure that we're going to see you again, Ms. Carr. So thank you for that. Uh, over to you, Mr. Pryor and, and Ms. Chance. Uh, same, same type of question. Do you have any thoughts on that? Sure. I mean, like this was an egregious violation of procurement policies, an egregious violation of a lot of different uh, ways in which contracting out has kind of bloated what people generally read as the public sector, right? Like public servants actually do not make up the entirety of the public sector. A huge amount of that is shady relationships with contractors that are sometimes needed, of course. And I'm speaking here as a policy analyst and as, a, as the president of a union that represents a lot of policy analysts. Even in that specialized world of policy development, contracting out is normal. There's databases we don't have access to. There are fields of information that we just can't have access to, but this whole element of not being able to build the institutional memory to be able to carry out our tasks in a regular way is a consistent problem. And when people talk about the bloat of the public sector, for our members, it's these vast webs of contractor relationships that could probably be done far more cheaply and more effectively and in the spirit of building institutional memory and capacity in-house. And so we don't agree that the public sector is over bloated. We don't agree that the public sector uh, requires a lot of trimming over the next uh, five to ten years. We do need this contractor relationship and this vast web of contractors to be severely reined in, however, because we feel that our members are qualified to do the type of work we do the best uh, with the correct levels of oversight, and those are very stringent levels of oversight. Thank you. Ms. If Shantz, I can just add briefly, yeah, I'd just like to add briefly, um, we're here today to talk about um, privacy. And so the minute we start adding layers of contracting out, all of a sudden we have infinite points for data breaches. We've seen with BGRS moving. We've seen recently there was another one. I can't remember the name right now. MCM yep. As, yeah. And so we, we see that these things start to happen, that all of a sudden when we start contracting more and more, we open ourselves to more and more points of failure, more and more points of breach. And that needs to be thought about in a holistic way of how we can minimize security because that's Canadians' personal data, public sector workers' personal data, and data that is important to our government from security perspectives. This is essential stuff. It's stuff that public sector workers are trained on, that they know how to do it, how to get it right.
But when we contract that out, we start losing control. And that's something that we need to be thinking about as well. Thank you okay. all very much. Thank you, uh, Mr. Brock. Thank you.